So hey to everyone following the channel. Um, I've been super busy, 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 busy of late doing testing. Um, but I, I figured I should really throw together this video. I want to remind me of where I'm going with this stuff. Um, I've been posting in the Mid Mini Mad Scientist group, which is on Facebook. If you don't know about it, go look it up. Join in if you're interested in seriously convoluted stuff. And I'd be the guy, but basically, um, this is not going to be a, a demo. I will sh not like a real demo. I'll just show you the the conceptual thing. I've been building remotes for testing, where I find the the fastest way to test out a pedal when I'm, I'm doing testing for it. Like, TC Electronics or Line 6 or, or the Flix or anyone like this is to make a mega preset, use a variax, which is every guitar in one. Yeah. And this is without amps, so I'm just. All the sounds in the world into a mega preset which combines the floor and the stomp and whatever other pedal I'm using. And that has me running through HX Edit or whatever support system the other pedals have. And I'm constantly flashing back and forth between this window and that window and the other window and ugh. And what I'm really trying to do is bridge. You've got a hardware level, then you have a software level where you're doing all the editing. You, you know, editors for MIDI controllers, editors for modelers, editors for whatever. Two levels. So I'm adding a third level over the top of that, which works for my brain, which is much more graphical. I do photography, I do design stuff, and you know. More as a passion and a hobby, these things than professionally, but I've always been interested in it. So this combines all these different creative outlets into one thing that kind of works. Yeah. The subject for this, um, because obviously, you know, I can't show you anything covered under NDA. It, so I've been looking at other effects and actually by accident stumbled into a whole bunch of stuff in the filters. Um, some of the delays I already knew, but didn't know the history of them at all. So whilst I've got a whole bunch of models aside, you know, which you'll, you'll see in proper videos later on, these cover stuff that are right here, right now in the Helix and building these is fairly exhausting, but it dives all the way down into all of the MIDI of the various helix types and other external MIDI controllers and you by doing this you will tend to flush out any bugs that there are in the system and you will also find strange behaviors or you will find reasons to set in you know requests to to upgrade something or change something or see how this works or see how that works but basically coming at this thing from four different viewpoints, four different heads, and it works really well. So without further ado, I stole my girl's phone and made a video of the iPad, which is right here, interacting with all this stuff. And straight up, it's craziness. It's absolute craziness. But the big goal for me at the end of the day is that this iPad can go wireless. I can connect this iPad to the Morningstar down there. The battery of the iPad gives the Morningstar enough power to run. I can stick CME witties in there, which I've got all over the place, or even legacy stuff. And I can take this screen and one little foot pedal off anywhere into another corner where it's cool and I don't have to be stuck here in front of all this gear and I could use a pedal, any instrument like the the Rowan 201, the original Space Echo, which is 
bigger than those boxes, massive analog thing. I can dial in all of that with all of that detail on something as small as a stump outside in the rain. Not today, obviously, but um, this gives you, with one tiny screen, one tiny foot controller, and one tiny stump, an instrument, in this case, that would cost somewhere in the region of 800 to 1500 for a reconditioned one. They stopped making them at the end of the 90s. And they're amazing. If you know nothing about them, I will link all of my research you'll find on my channel, Playlist Galore. As I find something that really interests me, I go and pick and pull videos from everywhere, put them in order, attach them into on song so I can follow the breadcrumbs and figure out how that thing works before moving on to the next thing. And that's all segments of the famous Line 6 Mini Dream Rig, which is taking this and a floor and power cabs and all of that and squeezing it into the front pocket of your guitar bag. So you get all that juice and something that big that you can jump on a plane with and go anywhere and study and have a good time. So without further ado, this could be a long one. Um, yeah, no apologies for that. This is made for people who are really wanting to dig into this, and I'll give you fair warning now. It's been a tough slog getting this thing to go, but I'm really happy with the direction where it's going. And when I switch to other pedals, it'll really start to make sense. With a Helix, you kind of don't have to do this. There's, there's 30 different ways around with a Helix, which has massive mapping. So, big up to Eric and all the guys who think of this stuff, you guys are insane. Alright, it's been a few days since I've done did. I've been super busy and I wanted to kind of do a vlog nerdy type thing and kind of explain what the hell's going on with this stuff. So, this whole thing is all about the, the Boss Space Echo, the Cosmo Echo, Cosmos Echo, whatever it's called. Which is interesting. I actually saw this thing on um, the gear page video or some video, that pedal show or something, and had this little bleeping silent centurion light. I was like, ooh, what's that? So, okay, the Space Echo, which is a copy of one that goes way back, way, way back, the tape machine. Basically, has an erase head, a recording head, and then three little heads and you can select them on the old machine and that was what the old machine was like. But I've been building and building and building these models and I wanted to give you an idea why. One for me that the the floor down there and an MC6 which is sitting beside it and this mode that you see right here right now a lot of lens flare this mode is the edit mode, which I think most people would know. It's really groovy because you can stop on stuff and it will tell you precisely up there in the window what it is. And this is really great on the floor. All the other Helix have it except for the stomp. And I've really been using this a lot, but there's one thing. You only get one switch at a time to change so that's treble so very typical MIDI thing that someone may want would be the ability to do two things at once I thought okay let's do two and then I was thinking hmm the MC6 can actually with this select EXP message send multiple things I was thinking okay what if we could have a few things twiddling and isolate one and then adjust that on the fly and why do I have to be bending down and looking down here all the time? It's going to kill my neck. So this was the answer to beta testing. And it's evolving slowly but surely. What I actually did was go out and find all these photos of stuff that's been around and clipped them out and done a whole bunch of graphic-y stuff. And then I found this boat switch, this little panel that works for boat lights. 
I've got that. You can check it amp and wiper, wash, and all that stuff. So then I found some fighter pilot things. I thought, okay, a whole bunch of switches. And the idea here is right here you got five switches at a time or six. And then you can switch pages and go over back and forth. On a simple model, maybe you just have six. On these big ones, maybe you have two pages of six or 12, or maybe three, or maybe four. This one has three. The last one is only spread, dry through trails, but all that can be mapped. But to do it, if you did it just here on a MC6, even though you can toggle pages, that would take an entire bank and not finish it. So hence, on song to the rescue. And all of these different trials I've been doing integrate with the Helix in different ways. And I, I would almost say, you know, th this is a right pain to, to do, but if you can check this out, the heads change just by tapping there on screen or the double one, I just do a double tap and we get heads one and three, two and three, one, two and three, treble and bass work can nip around the on off here works so, a lot of general faffing about but where would you see a candidate for this any kind of uh, effect that is actually more of an instrument this thing is used since the 70s by pink floyd by all kinds of people or pretty much any kind of music I like, this thing has been used in its production, even live on stage. So, check this big massive switch out. So, I've got that whack, hit it. She turns on and off. Found this zoom thing on the iPhone. So, check that out. On and off. And you can go through, hit the individual values like treble, mix, sliding up here, looking at the screen. Effectively, you can have two feet working two things, or I can set this up to run up to five, six, up to 16 different messages or combinations therein. So this for beta testing, is unbelievable. Now, obviously, I can't show you any of the beta stuff, but this goes back ages. And it's super interesting because when Ben, Adrian, and, and Sammy, uh, hey, Sammy, it's kind of for you guys, like, you know, big up to the Line 6 boys. When they build these models, they're adding in stuff that wasn't there, but that could have been or should have been. The evolution of this from the RE100, which was the first one, didn't have the bass treble reverb. It was much simpler. And my mic for MTC Electronics has one of these, and I've spoken to him about it, and I've asked Phil Miller about these things, and I've been searching for this guy, Angela, whoever made this model, to figure out what's in there and what's not. Going above and beyond all this stuff, is it back down here? In the Helix, typically, a lot of these effects can be split up into different models. Like in the Mutron, there's an upside, there's a downside, there's two different models for the same pedal. Because they do totally different things, and maybe you'd only use one at a time. But here, you can recombine all those things. So, like the input um, volume or sort of a gain thing, you can stick that on a gain pedal and have the two of these interact or you can still use this thing with snapshots in some different forms and control it or you can go in here and you can set your your maximum minimums like you normally do these right here and it all works so Caveats, caveats galore. This is one royal pain in the ass to do. Um, with a Helix, I don't know if I would ever wish this on, you know, my worst enemy to go through and map all this stuff, but it really opens your head about 
what goes into building the helix, what kind of levels of control you have. There's probably a billion and one other ways to do this. But where this does actually come in handy, I mean super handy, is any exterior pedals that you have, like an Iridium, like a Sim 1, or anything that has MIDI mapping on there, but doesn't have that kind of power to do editing, or something like the little stomp here, which is the love of my life. That goes everywhere with me. That can't do edit mode. So what you may normally do is build up a preset in the floor, just copy and save it into the, the stomp and off you go. And your regular EXP can do one or two things or multiple things. But this thing is a portable visual graphical editing mode, super duper mishmash of stuff. And a multi-level menu thing, so. All that works, you know? And turn her on, get her going. Double click, have to always remember that. But really cool, change tap. You can change the reverb and volume. The writing that's coming up there can be taken away. I use that for testing, but when I'm doing major testing on major beta testing, I tend to just jump all the way down to these kind of levels to really learn a pedal. And the biggest thing that I've gotten out of this is there's so many pedals and filters and, and stuff that really I didn't know the, the full history of. And pair that with a Variax, which is any guitar in one. This thing becomes an engine for creating tone, which is beyond brilliant. And from there you can export it to your other stuff and make little tiny portable mini breaks with all that power there. So really hope that's useful and helpful. I wouldn't recommend necessarily doing this unless you have a penchant for torture, but so we're all going into lockdown now, hope everyone's well. This would be a hell of a way to pass the time and really, 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 really learn the helix in your other pedals. You really got to dive in deep with this.